Well, hey guys, it's Ross. I thought I'd do a, a fig update for you guys on the potted figs. Um, I want to show you different random points of interest on the patio that I think are obviously um, somewhat entertaining, but also informational for you guys. Something that you guys can learn. Um, kind of like the fig rambling videos I did last year, right? So these are my younger trees. These are my more experimental varieties. The, these were sticks um, about six-ish months ago. So they were in, indoors, rooted indoors, and they, that process takes about three months. And then around May 1st, I brought them outside, got them well adjusted to this environment. And some of these guys back here have been growing in this location outside in five gallon size pots now for about three months. And three months later, they are looking really good. They're about, I would say three and a half, some of them are about three and a half to three feet tall. Um, by the end of the season, I have no doubt, as this guy right here is probably pushing five feet. So I have no doubt that some of these guys are going to be at least up to the, the height here of the sunroom, which is what I wanted, um, or actually even taller than me, which is great. Uh, not necessarily because I want them to be so big, but I really want the form to be perfect and those scaffolds to be as long as possible. Because what we're going to do this upcoming season, we talked about recently light penetration into the canopy and how important that is to form the fruits along the branches. So we're going to be doing um, some widening of the canopies, especially on some of these trees, some that are more stubborn to fruit than others. And we're going to widen up those canopies. We're going to do some limb bending. I have some wire, but I also have some stakes and we can do that in the beginning of next year. I will do some, uh, some pruning obviously to fix the form, get the form exactly how I want, get my main trunk. This has really been my main goal with these trees is to get one single stem trunk in these pots and then have myself about two to three scaffolds that should all be about at the same height. And then from those scaffolds next year will be the fruiting branches. So that's really it. And all these trees are kind of doing that. And if they're not doing that just yet, um, I've taken it upon myself to kind of intervene here because we still have about, you know, about a solid month is really what I want them to do is to grow for another solid month. And if I give them a couple more feedings and I give them a lot of water, they're going to take off. They've already sort of taken off in the last month um, after we had pinched these guys because I pinched them, you know, most of these guys around 30 to 45 days ago. So just to get that form established or to really force them to fruit because I wasn't necessarily just interested in having them grow tall. I wanted them to also fruit. I wanted to get an idea of the fruit to confirm the variety um, and to get some preliminary, just some preliminary information about these varieties because they are so young and I'm going to do a separate video on this. Just talking about how fruit quality of figs when they're very young is just not up to up to par. These more mature varieties here behind you guys that I'm going to show you in a minute, the fruit quality is far superior than these younger trees. And yes, I've actually been able to fruit these guys in the last couple weeks. I have been getting some fruits off of these trees. How is that possible off of these young trees that were only sticks six months ago? Well, because they had formed fruits sometime when they were indoors or right when I had just brought them outside. And now three months later, you fast forward 90 days after the figs form, you then get ripe fruit. So I've actually picked a number of fruits all throughout here. I had one here that ended up being some kind of Violet de Bordeaux, had an interesting little neck, weird ring around the neck. Uh, this guy here, Tolosa, really has impressed me so far. It's uh, a nice grower, it puts out a lot of fruit. And the fruit quality actually was not um, high in any way, <laughs> but the, the quality of the fig, the texture of the fig was actually quite impressive. And I've seen photos of what the fruit should look like, so I'm sort of really getting quite excited about that variety in the future, right? It's a nice little glimpse. We had a, a hardy Chicago type back, ripened back there. There's more coming in. We had Princessa ripened for the first time which uh, Princess is supposed to be a very interestingly 
uh, textured fig. And it has a really interesting jelly texture to it, which I thought was uh, not unusual, but it's not something you normally see in every fig all the time. It's not necessarily a texture I really love. So I'm interested to see if that's really going to continue in the future, because that's what that variety is supposed to be all about, is the texture. Um, so, you know, there's been some nice data so far that I've been able to collect with these varieties, some nice preliminary results. And what I, I think I alluded to a little bit earlier was that we're going to give them a couple feedings. We're going to let them grow until about September. And then I'm going to stop the water, uh, pretty much stop the water completely. I'm not going to water them any little bit except for what the rain is giving them. Um, because at that point in the season, around September, we get a lot of rain anyway. And the rain probably is enough to keep these guys growing and giving me a consistent, hopefully a consistent moisture content in the soil. Anything excess might be a little bit too much water and then they're gonna to continue to grow. And what I want them to do by decreasing that water is then to slow down their growth and actually stop the growth. Um, a lot of the trees behind you guys have stopped their growth. As I do this most years, I try to get these guys to slow down and stop by really stopping that water, mainly for the fruit quality, right? If you can stop your water, control that, make it sure it's con consistently low, somewhere between dry and moist is where you want your soil, you'll have all your growth cease and you'll actually have higher fruit quality uh, because that moisture is not necessarily going into the fruits. Um, and also what's really nice about that is that the branches really get well lignified on these trees. And I've seen uh, you know, some data over the years now. It seems like there's some definite varying degrees in what I would consider good lignification and perfect li lignification. And I think getting well lignified trees is really key to having a better um, cutting quality, but also getting these trees to be able to withstand much colder temperatures than what you would expect in the wintertime. That first fall frost that comes in around Thanksgiving can really hurt these trees. And although you put out a lot of growth, like these younger trees we showed you, you know, they, they if they're going to grow to six feet tall, but the, the growth is going to be not lignified in any amount, that first frost is going to come in and wipe out a lot of those that growth. So it's kind of a waste. You know, at a certain point of the year, it's a really great idea to stop the water, stop the fertilizer, um, you want to give them enough water so that they're, you know, they're surviving, right? It's not completely dry. But here in my humid climate, we got to stop the water at a certain point. And a lot of these varieties, like I said, we're in August. A lot of them now are ripening. We have this Violette de Bordeaux. It's a variety called Petite Albique. The thing is filled with fruits, absolutely filled, jam-packed with fruits. There's um, probably 70-ish fruits on this tree this year which is really quite awesome. Um, and they're forming at different times of the year too. I'm gonna to have two crops of uh, Violet de Bordeaux off this tree. Um, overall, this is one of the most productive trees you can grow because it not only had about 20 Breba on it, it's got a ton of main crop and it's also forming a second main crop because I took off those Brabas. But um, with the help of that greenhouse, it's been insane and you can just see you know how productive I'll show you some of these branches are it's just it's crazy and here's a branch right here you can see a lot of these figs are swelling not the most productive branch there but if you look up on this tree look at that I mean that's just the amount of fruit and density in that one little spot is just it's crazy um, there's probably 15 fruits on each of these little fruiting branches. And then look at this big guy right there. I mean, that's crazy. And a lot of them are turning, uh, turning color now, you know? So a lot of them, unfortunately, are going to ripen at once, which is not necessarily the best thing. Um, because if they ripen all at once and they start turning color all at once, a big rain event can come in, which actually we're going to have a big rain event tomorrow. Um, it's going to rain 
probably at least an inch, maybe two inches, depending on how crazy the hurricane gets up here in the Northeast. Uh, it's finally reaching this part of the country. So what I'm gonna actually do before rain, I like to do a harvest and, uh, and pick some of these figs because if I don't pick them now, the fruit quality is gonna really suffer. Um, again, there's gonna be just so much water um, that it's not gonna be a good thing. The figs are gonna split and if they don't split, you know, the, the soil is gonna be too wet and they're gonna be a lot less sweet. They're gonna have a lower bricks. This guy here is one of the best figs I think you can, really one of the best tasting figs in the world. And people do not, I don't know, they don't really give, I think, this fig enough credit. Um, although I don't know if really anyone ever, if anyone has this fig. There's not many people who grow this. This is called Paradiso from Bode. And I recently compared this to a mango. And this is one of the better varieties, as I mentioned, that you can, you can eat. Um, it's just so darn good. It really is. It's really like a four to a four and a half. The issue is that it splits. It's really not a good variety for this climate. And the only way I would ever consider growing this fig is if you can give it a greenhouse head start in this climate. It's extremely jammy and very thick and very dense. Oh yeah, it's so good. It's almost as good, I swear to you, it's almost as good, if not as good, as the Col de Doms. It's really, really tasty. And I haven't, believe it or not, I've been ripening some cold Adam figs, which is, I was going to do a separate video just on that. They're insanely good. If you have never had a cold Adam fig and you grow figs, you collect varieties or you have many varieties, it's really the one you have to, have to, have to have. More important, in my opinion, to have that variety than any other variety to really experience what I'm talking about. This amazing, thick, jammy texture in here is mind-blowing. It's absolutely mind-blowing. It's just so good. The Something about the honey or the nectar in these figs and those acnes, man, they really just give you the best texture, the best mouthfeel. It's the best jam you could ever eat. You can't make a jam that good. You can't even make one. If I turned that into jam by cooking it down, it's not as good. Um, anyway, so a lot of these trees now, as I said, they're, they're kind of stopping their growth. They're done putting out new fruits because I forced them all to fruit. If not, I sort of just let them grow like this Smith tree here. Not the most productive year for it. It is productive. I could, you could make an argument. It's got a pretty decent amount of fruit on it. But overall, not the most productive variety I find. You can see these branches more on this side and this guy down here, which is a bit more shaded. It doesn't have nearly as much fruit on it. But overall, I'm gonna get some nice Smith figs to try. And some of my younger trees of Smith, because we've propagated so many of them over the years, we'll be able to get a, a nice little tasting. Here's some Azores Dark. This tree took a real big beating after coming out of the greenhouse. It got sunburned. A lot of the leaves looked horrible, but it, it put out some nice new growth. And now these leaves allowed the tree to fruit and put out some more growth down here. Um, I have been feeding these guys a little bit longer than you would have thought, but really the fact that the water has not been consistent and it's also been low. We had a couple days out here, unfortunately, in the last week or two where the water on these varieties was not consistent. And if you want to have good, 
quality on your fruits, you got to have consistent fruit quality. So I wasn't getting for about a week good fruit quality on these varieties. Just some random things had happened <coughs> out of my control, unfortunately. It sort of happens every sometime in July every year or something. You, you know, maybe even in August. You got to get things straightened out with your water. Um, hopefully, I can you know really streamline that next year and make things a bit better be because it's so warm here in July and August. Is that you really got to be careful if you're not watering them. You don't. You probably want to be a little bit less stingy with your water than. Uh, then you should, you know, give them a little bit more water than you probably think. But overall, again, if you can keep that water really low, I mean, you're looking at some really great quality fruits. So a number of these varieties have produced. My Galicia Negra is looking real good. It's going to turn some color soon. This is my Verdino del Nord, which has put out a lot of fruit for such a late start. And, you know, it really doesn't have any scaffolds to it. This is really the first year I've let it form some scaffolds because I've pruned it every year to try to get as many cuttings and to propagate as many plants of this as possible. I've planted a lot of these throughout the yard. Uh, but it just goes to show you that you're going to have a successful fig season here, guys, at some point. I mean, there's some real intensely dense fruits on here. These trees, once they get a certain amount of age to them, simply because you're able to widen up that canopy, get yourself more light into these trees, get them a bigger root system, you know, it's amazing what they can do and how much fruit they put out, um, you know, how productive they can be. It's really quite something. I've been super impressed with this fig here. It's De La Senora Hivernenka. I'm, I'm uh, really sold on that one for sure. And I've put on some air layers as well here, guys. You might be able to make out the tin foil over there. Um, I'm putting on some, some air layers simply because, um, lost my microphone here, guys. <laughs> one of the trees stole my microphone. Um, but I think what we're, we're trying to do here we're not necessarily doing air layers this year to make copies. What I really wanted to do was, if I'm gonna make a copy, I'm gonna do some prunings. I'm gonna take the cuttings off and I'm gonna root them. A rooting has been so good that actually I think rooting cuttings, once you get so good at it, is better than air layering some of these trees. You can see the tin foil there. That's the sandwich bag method that I use. We've done videos on that. Here's another one right here. But if I am air layering it, it's very simply because I don't have enough cuttings and I want to guarantee myself an extra plant. Or it's on a particular rootstock and I want to get it off that particular rootstock. So this variety here, as an example, we have a, the rootstock here is growing, which is called Strawberry Verte. One of my favorite varieties, actually here, it looks like a strawberry verte fig is starting to swell. We also have the top part of my Izmir tree, which is damaged. There is some damage on the bark right in here. So what I did was I just put a pot on this, filled it in with some soil, watered it in really well. And now that this is gonna form roots in this pot, and I'll able, I'm able to, if I want, 